Okay, we're going to talk about how to record daily sales with over and short accounts. So when would you use this? This is for customers who use maybe an outside point of sale system as an example, not QuickBooks point of sale, because of course QuickBooks point of sale has a connector to QuickBooks, but an outside point of sale system and they're trying to post their daily sales. So ex as an example, we have a restaurant client they function all of their catering business and all of their online sales through QuickBooks Financial, but in their restaurant, they have a Micros POS system, okay? So on a weekly basis, they post in a daily sales or weekly sales receipt to record all the sales that are happening in their Micros system. Another example that we use a sales receipt for is sometimes for customers that do a lot of online sales and they have a whole online customer platform, right? That has, you know, all the customer information, it has all of the um, email addresses and, you know, we run sales reports by customer out of that outside system. And on the financial side, all we're doing is we're just recording on a daily, weekly basis our sales. Okay, so that's what we use a daily sales type of transaction. Um, another example would be customers of ours that are nonprofits and they have an outside system again that tracks their memberships and all of their members. All of the reports are functioning there. So we don't need the details of every single sale by every single member in QuickBooks, right? Because we use that outside member system to be able to run those reports. All we need to record in QuickBooks is the sale, the cash, etc. So we're doing those in lump sum as opposed to putting every single transaction in. Now we definitely recommend if you have outside systems that are functioning and in detail that you can report on, there's no reason to put the details in QuickBooks, right? The only reason you want to put the details in QuickBooks, meaning by customer, by item, etc., is if you can't get that information from your outside system. Otherwise, there's no reason to duplicate the two databases, right? Let QuickBooks do what it does well, which is your accounting, and let your CRM system or your uh, member man management system or whatever it is do what it does well and you know, handle membership information. Okay, so again, what are we, how does this look? So we're gonna go in and use a sales receipt. This is how we enter daily sales generally. So the reason we use a sales receipt is it separates us, right, from the invoices. So again, in my example of a restaurant client who functions and does all their catering through QuickBooks Financial, the catering goes in on an invoice, okay? The sales receipt goes in for all the daily sales. So that way, if we're ever trying to segregate on reports, right, what is our POS sales versus our catering sales? I mean, obviously you could use a class for that, but we could also use a report filtered by transaction type, which allows us to segregate those two. Okay, on the sales receipt, you can choose to put in a customer job on sales receipts, but you don't have to. When we're doing lump sum daily sales, we don't, we're not entering the customer information most likely, right? We're just putting it in here as a daily sale. So you don't have to put anything in here. Uh, in the example of my customer with the restaurants, they have multiple restaurants. So we do put in a customer job by restaurant, okay, so that they can run a report just to say, you know, how much did I sell at restaurant one versus two? But again, it's not required. Down below here on daily sales receipts, again, you can put it at the item level if you don't have those details coming out of your outside system. Otherwise, what we generally do is we have high level categories. So in the example of a restaurant, we have food as an item. It's not going to be an inventory part. It's going to be a non-inventory part, other charge or service. And basically what I'm saying is I, when I purchase this item, I want it to hit cost of goods sold, right? And when I sell this item, I want it to hit revenues or sales, okay? So I'd say I had food, and again, you can put in quantities, lot numbers, whatever you want to put in here, but I had food of $8,500 in sales of food. Be pretty weird for it to be an exact number like that, but let's pretend. And then I have another, uh, you know, bar sales, Yes, and the bar sales account is also going to be non-inventory and it's going to hit 
bar cogs as an example and uh, this is going to be a cost of goods sold account and it's going to hit you know uh, bar revenues and that'll be an income account okay and let's say we had um, 4585.63 and then we have I don't know if you have any merchandise you can add in merchandise right sales again so you get the idea here okay so what I'm doing is I'm recording all of the sales first and which sales accounts I want to affect then what I want to do is I want to record the payments so when we net out our sales receipt we really want to get to a zero dollar sales receipt right so there should be no effect zero zero dollar total down here so on my payments now I'm gonna say okay on American Express we're gonna set it up as a payment account type the payment for American Express can go into probably some kind of clearing account right some MasterCard Visa American Express clearing as an example here and basically the reason we use a clearing account right is we have okay our daily sales receipt says we had uh, $5,500 in Amex and then when we record our deposit from Amex from the bank it'll offset that clearing account and hopefully the two tie out okay so I have a payment so we're gonna say negative 5,500 and again, if it's exact like that at a restaurant, ooh, <laughs> there might be something wrong. <laughs> uh, and then we also have, let's say, some cash in drawer, right? So some people paid us some cash, and so we're going to make it a payment account. And this time, instead of going to a company, um, and to a savings account, we're going to say to the petty cash account. But again, you should usually use a cash in drawer account. I'm just using that for now. And let's say we had negative. Uh, 4835.26 and then we had some uh, checks maybe and the checks are going to go in as a payment account type but they're going to go to undeposited funds okay or group with other undeposited funds here all right and so we had checks of 2745.37 all right, and that leaves us with $5 left over. Now I said I wanted it to be zero, right? But when I run my report, if it doesn't come out to zero for any reason, sometimes we have you know, loss or miscounted things. So we need to have an overshort. So we create a record, uh, an account called overshort or an item called overshort. That's gonna be a non-inventory part or other charge, okay? And the overshort account is going to go to overshort as an expense okay it's part of doing business people calculate things wrong right over short as an expense and that remaining five dollars is going to go there oops I put 50 negative five <laughs> so now when I'm finished with this sales receipt right what it does is it zeroes out my sales receipt it allows me to reconcile I should be able to reconcile against my American Express payment here. So again, I get a deposit from American Express. Hopefully it's $5,500 for today or the week or whatever, you know, whatever time period you're using. I should have cash in drawer to deposit into my bank, right, of 4835. I should have checks to deposit of 274537 and then I have this overshort of $5. Okay? So I'm going to make this sales order called uh, deposit um, 32 just so that we can run a report for it. So let me go ahead in here and say save. Now I'm gonna go in and run a profit and loss report and filter it for number deposit 32, okay? So you can see here on my profit and loss, what it's doing is I have revenue of 8,500, bar revenue of 4585.63, and then over and short of $5. And then, of course, when I go into my banking and I make my deposits, I have my 2745 of checks, right, that we're waiting to deposit in there. And then again, if I went and looked at my petty cash account, it would go up as well as my MasterCard or my Amex clearing account has gone up. 
Now again, you can post as much detail as you want on these sales receipts. I could have done it at an inventory level if I wanted to get that detailed in here. Okay, so it would affect my inventory effectively. So I could have done that on this transaction. So you can, you can get much more in depth than what I'm showing here, but this gives you a good idea of how to record a daily sale.